Hey everybody, um, welcome to my workshop again. As promised, we're going to be doing a video on my four-wheel steering on my TRX-4. And we'll crack open the receiver box and show you how I did it. Um, it I will uh, also be writing down a parts list of what you need to do this mod. And I will put it just after this intro, so you can pause the video on that. Uh so you can see what you need to get to do it um, you know uh, we've made it over a hundred subscribers we are about 8300 views 8400 views you know getting close to that 10,000 mark um, I appreciate all your guys's support and uh, hope you like this video and subscribe and share out or share the hell out of my channel uh, thank you guys and uh, let's get to this All right, so here we are. Um, I've already got the body clips out. Um, showed you guys how I do or how I did my lighting. That's not what you guys want to see today, though. So we'll uh, get this cracked open. Oh, first, um, I used a front. Uh, front shock mount or front uh, cross member that goes in between the shock mounts um, you should have you should get a uh, left front shock mount mounted on the right rear um, your links you are probably gonna want to run them the opposite way I did um, you will need a pan hard bar um, you will need the uh, steering link set up you will need your offset ends um, the front axle didn't have to buy a whole front axle to do this um, so you notice I'm only running three link with a pan hard bar in the rear um, the reason is is when uh, it, the servo applies torque it was actually moving the whole rear axle side to side because of the slack in the links um, so you know you'll need to delete uh, one of your top links it's probably going to be the one on the right hand side of the RC because of where the link mount is on the top of the front axle um, so the I'm using front mounts uh, front outer or front C knuckles front housing uh, inner shafts and portal gears, inner or top portal gears uh, for a front axle and inner front portal housings. I am using the, uh, and you need the bearing for the inner front uh, bearing there on the shaft, but the outer bearing and the portal gear, drive stub. Everything is exactly the same. It is taken straight from the rear axle, so you don't actually need a whole rear axle. Um, you can convert it over to a steering axle with just a few parts and a little determination and patience. Um, so, the way, you know, you can see the servos mounted just identical to the way it would be in the front. Um, I've got my mount undone here so I could show you guys that um, let's crack open my receiver box and power this thing up show you a few things I'm I've changed up some stuff on my uh, DX5 uh, C spectrum radio since um, I needed to free up a channel but I wasn't willing to sacrifice my lockers uh, because I like to be able to disengage my rear locker for digs and sometimes I need my front uh, I need my front disengaged because it will spin and slide over as I'm uh, as I'm trying to crawl up up something. You know, if I don't have quite enough traction for steering and for pulling, um, it won't uh, it won't go. It just kind of slips off. So. We've uh, 
eliminated the, uh, or well, needed to save the ability to eliminate uh, the locked front diff, um, which I actually did run it that way until I got my T-lock module. So, of course we have the noisy Savox steering servo up front, 500 ounce. Uh, it's the, uh, Oh, 1230SG. Um, right now I'm only running a 20 kilogram uh, H, uh, Power HD servo on the rear. But, um, so this, you guys wanted to see how I'm doing it. I'm using my Aux 1 channel. And I also, ooh, bump the throttle. So I come into my controller, and I can go to, where is it? Hmm. I will find it. Ah, mixing. Okay, so I can go to Master Steering Slave Ox One. And bring the rate up to as much as you want. Now see that's in crab mode. Damn it. Pardon the French. So go back to menu. Reverse. And it can still be controlled independently. But it will add to it. So... Let's go back into mixing. See, I don't run this normally on the I don't normally run it where it steers with the wheel. Normally rely just on the switch. And I have the steering rate turned down on my uh on my uh <clears throat> auxiliary one. Okay, I've gone back and inhibited all those so we're back to operation that I use I'm using uh, E for that uh, let's see go back to main screen so C front I'm using this for my two speed and you can see Front's unlocked, rear is locked, rear is locked, front is locked, front is locked, whoop, I hit the wrong button, rear is open, front locked, yeah, I hit the wrong button, both locked, front open, rear locked, so 
you can see I still have full functionality of everything the TRX4 had for or had before. Um, but I'm running uh, I'm running it programmed the way I had it programmed with my controller before because I don't find myself needing both differentials unlocked at the same time. And that's why I turn the or unplug the vehicle before I turn off the radio. So turn off the radio here and I'll go into the receiver box with you and show you what I've done. So Oh, and of course the sticky tape is stuck to the servo. Put that back on there. Might stick one more time. So the receiver is a Spectrum SRS 6000. You notice there is a bind plug still in. That's disabling the AVS, the automatic vehicle stability system um, and the bind battery plug is aux, aux out for my lights and winch um, aux 4 and disable is for is how you leave the bind plug in the aux 4 disable position uh, you have to do put it in there before binding bind with it in there and a second bind plug in the bind battery Otherwise, your AVLS will be active, and it is a royal pain to deactivate if you don't use the bind plug. You will actually lose two channels, auxiliary one and two, because they are controlled by the AVLS. Um, so, aux three, I have two white wires coming out of that plug. One goes to the uh, aux wire on my Mamba X to disable drag brake. Um, the aux two you see goes to the Traxxas T module I have my front locker plugged into B my rear locker plugged into A my channel is reversed in the radio that's what allows me to have my differentials acting the way they are um, auxiliary one is uh, my steering channel for rear and of course you know your standard throttle and steering you know one to turn or one to burn two to turn or no one to turn two to burn yeah so Space in the receiver box is very limited with all this stuff in there. It's actually quite the chore to stuff everything in there and not have it get in the way when you're trying to put the lid on. But um, I'm sure some of you other guys are going to find a better way to do this. But this is how I did it. And I really, I really enjoy the way it acts this way. Um, there is one thing though, I am going to be getting rid of my 4600 kV uh, censored motor and stepping down a lot. Um, this thing being this fast with a two wheel steer is perfectly controllable. It is not on four wheel steering. I cannot run it in high range over half throttle without it getting too squirrely to control. <clears throat> So, you know, if there's any questions you guys have that I may have missed something, um, you know, post in the comments and I will get back to you uh, with a response as soon as I can. Yeah, it might not be immediate as I work freaking six days a week, uh, eight to eight to ten hours a day, depending on the day. Um, you know, I'll post a, you know, I'll post an answer as much as I can. I try to be really responsive to my subscribers. Um, you guys are what's making my channel grow. Um, it's not so much the content I post, but the fact that you guys show appreciation, like, subscribe, watch, share. Um, so help me make this grow. Help me get it monetized so I can fund the veteran giveaway cars with it. So hit the bell button, stay notified so you can see what I'm up to. Um, give me a like, a subscribe, you know, you guys are awesome, get out there, enjoy the hobby, you know, that's what it's all about, is just having fun, doing what you, doing what brings you relief, <laughs> brings you a smile, so, 
Get out there, folks.